Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we will talk about how to best prepare for the raid coming up on the 21st of November. And as always, if you get value out of this video, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. So the details we have so far is that obviously the game's coming out November 10th, and we basically have the raid coming out 11 days later. So they've actually given us a decent amount of time to prepare this time. But there are some things you can do now to best prepare yourself. Now, keeping in mind, we don't know what the sandbox is going to do. So we don't know what are going to be the optimal things that we can take into the raid. But we do know that we're going to be limited based on sun setting on what can be increased in power level. So again, I'm going to talk through that and also how you can get leveled up as quickly as possible. So obviously with the season winding down, you're going to want to maximize the things that you can utilize for next season. So first off, we know that phase glass needle, alkane dust, Simulation Seed and Seraphite are all going away because those are materials from the plants that are going away. So as quickly as possible, one of the things I would do, obviously there could be an exchange rate later, but one of the things I would do is go ahead, when the, you have the times with Banshee, where he actually sells his upgrade modules for those uh, currencies, I would utilize those. I would also potentially go to Spider, and with Spider, you can actually turn some of those things in to either get Shards or in some cases to get Glimmer, okay? The other thing I would do is, one thing that becomes a real uh, thing that you need is Glimmer. Because you'll have a lot of Glimmer going into the season, but as you do upgrades and as you buy things, you're going to run out of Glimmer. So one of the things I do is I go and get the Year 3 Zavala's Authority Ship, and I buy as many of those as I can. And I actually put those into my vault so I can take them out because they do cost a little bit, but then you get like 5,000 Glimmer back in the next season. So those really come in handy. Again, what I'll do is I'll buy a bunch of them, put them in there, build up my uh, Glimmer over the next few weeks, buy some more. And then again, you can also turn in some of these materials that you're never going to be able to use again and do the same thing. That'll give you instant Glimmer in next season. You can also make sure you hoard shaders. So try to keep as many shaders available because again, a lot of shaders, if you break them down, they give you Glimmer in addition. The other thing is how you properly store bounties and which bounties you're going to go for. Let's talk through that. Now, you only have 63 slots in your inventory to be able to store things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you get rid of any old quests, any things that you have, any, you know, any of those old things that you don't need that are taking up spots because any of those spots will take away from bounties that you can keep. The next few weeks, what you're going to want to do is do your primary uh, gambit, crucible, and strike bounties, your weeklies. And for the most part, I think if you do it for three weeks, some of the bounties um, rotate. And I think most of them are on a two or three week schedule. So as long as you do them each week for three weeks and do them across all three characters, you can save all those weeklies. And they those will give you the most XP. They also give you bright dust. So I would do that. I would also get the dailies so you can save up on those. The other thing, the weeklies from the Lectern, Eris, and Banshee also give a great amount of, of um, XP. So I would just keep doing those over the next few weeks. And then obviously as you go through this, if you get up close to full, but you still have the ability to do some additional weeklies, just delete some dailies, go ahead and redeem those, and then put those in. But again, that's what we're going to do. You have 63 slots, maximize those. When you first get in for the season, one of the things before you turn in your bounties that you're going to want to do is try to you know wait a little bit and actually get into an activity. Either get your get yourself a little bit further on your seasonal track, because they usually give you an XP booster somewhere, or you know, in the first few levels before you turn your bounties, or go into a six player activity. Uh, I would say in the past menagerie, but that's going away, but get into something that has some other players and then go in there and actually, and if you do a friend, you can do it all at the same time, turn your bounties all there. Because again, you'll get extra from having the other people in your party that have fire team uh, boost. The other thing that you can do is use the, um, use the ghosts that actually give you additional XP. So that's really helpful. Do all of those to kind of get as many XP and get your levels going up as quickly as possible. Um, you also want to uh, grind out a lot of uh, Crucible potentially, because as you go up in Crucible levels, you actually get drops that, that go above your power level in those activities. So as you go up those levels. So that's another thing that can be really helpful. And then, of course, during those weeks, make sure you do everything. Make sure you do all your, your, your first start off with everything that's lower level. Try to get all your lower level stuff done. And then slowly work yourself up once you get up to the uh, power cap. 
work yourself up to your soft uh, power cap and your hard power cap activities, right? Again, maximize those. And then with your three characters, you'll want to exchange weapons and armor. Usually start on the character you don't want to play the most. And then as you get it leveled up, doing all of its bounties and everything else, and doing everything for a week, then you switch your weapons over to the next character, and then you work backwards the same way over a few weeks. So again, you'll have two weeks to kind of work on your power level. The other thing I like to do is this week what I'll do is, you know, you have so many umbrals already. What I'll do is I'll actually go in and I'll actually go in and I will keep my umbrals as full as possible. So exotic um, things, exotic em engrams as they drop, watch good your postmaster, then just leave me your postmaster. Because next season, I think they'll drop at a higher level, but even if they don't, you then have a high, you have a, you, if you have all the exotics already, you'll more than likely get a new exotic from the new season. So that'll also be useful. And hopefully at the beginning of the season, they'll have an exotic quest. If they have an exotic quest, that's another way you'll be able to because those drop a little bit higher than other thing, everything else too. So now let's talk about loadouts and what loadouts are optimal. So obviously you're going to have less options because of sunsetting. But one thing you can do right now to help with that, I'll first go over weapons and then I'll kind of talk about what loadouts look at, like. If you start out with doing umbrals right now, there are actually a number of really good umbrals that you can get for some weapons that'll that'll key off into some builds. And again, these things will be going up to 1360. The other thing is, most of these, if you if you've leveled up your umbral uh, caster as far as it can go, you'll actually get these with two secondary draw, uh, slots. So you'll be able to have two perks at the end that you can switch between, and some of those are really helpful. So a couple things you can get from umbrals right now that are really helping builds is Cold Denial, that's a pulse rifle, that can come with multi-kill clip, swashbuckler, unrelenting, feeding frenzy, and zen moment. And it's a, it's a pretty steady gun. Again, pulses haven't been the strongest thing, but it's a good thing to, to, to fill out a build. It's a good thing for clearing ads, just over time, a good, reliable gun. Obviously, it's Fallen Guillotine, and everyone knows you want Whirlwind and Relentless on that. I personally have, like, I think 67 copies of this, but it, it definitely is something good and useful to use. A Breach Light can come with Rampage, Vorpal, Multi-Kill Clip, and Outlaw. Again, this is just, this is a pretty good gun. Um, again, it fills out, it's not a killer gun, but it's a gun that fills out your builds and is reliable. And, of course, Gnawing Hunger. Again, I have 345 Gnawing Hungers, I think. Not seriously, but it's a lot. Um, and they drop all the time. And you can get that with Rampage, Multi-Kill Clip, Kill Clip, Swashbuckler, Tap the Trigger, Zen Moment, and Subsistence. And specifically, the Subsistence one with some of the other perks is, is really great because you can actually make a build where the Gnawing Hunger basically, until it runs out of ammo, just never stops shooting if you're doing a bunch of trash ads. So it's, so it's really good. So again, with the change to the landscape, the sandbox, which we don't know what it looks like, and the fact that they're sunsetting so many weapons... And the fact is a lot of the mods are going away. So now you won't get fallen spec mods. That's going to that's gonna hurt you. you. You want to figure out how you can kind of do a build with not knowing what the new season looks like. Well, let's talk about what the basic of, of a typical weapons build is going to look like, especially in a raid. Typically, you want something that's a high DPS weapon. You want something that's really good at ad clearing. And then you want a panic weapon. Okay, your panic weapon is something that you use if you're in trouble and you need to kill something really quickly, like a major or something like that. So I'm going to talk about a couple builds you can build up for different scenarios. You might end up in high-end content like Nightfalls or in Raids or things like that. The other thing is all the builds that I'm talking about, I'm going to base them around a base exotic because we know all exotics are going to be coming up and staying at the correct power level for a long period of time. So it's a good thing to base any of your builds on. So let's talk about that. So first off, there's kind of a medium jack-of-all-trades build that I would put. And again, I'm going to give you multiple options depending on your play style. But in the, in the kinetic slot, I would either go with Wither Horde or Outbreak Perfected. Um, Outbreak Perfected, if you don't have it, um, I have a video here on how you can get it. You still have some time to kind of get that. Wither Horde's pretty easy to get within this season. Again, these aren't killer exotics, but Outbreak, if you have a bunch of people with Outbreak, actually, with, with the Nanites and you have the Catalyst, too, you can actually do a great deal of damage. But that one I would put in the kinetic slot. Then I would put a combination of either Gnawing Hunger or Last Hope. Again, those are both things that are going to persist in a new meta. And then Falling Guillotine. So this build is going to give you some great options for doing DPS. Um, and it's going to give you some great options for keeping killing ads. And then the Falling Guillotine, depending on what you're doing, that could also be, in certain scenarios, something you use for DPS or killing majors or things like that. So again, really good build. Then there's your up-close and personal loadout. 
That one I was going to give Traveler's Chosen or Huckleberry in your primary. And again, these are great. They actually have other perks that can help you out. Huckleberry is also good at clearing ads. But again, these are good general sort of close-up um, primaries you can use. With that, then I would use the Iclos um, Sniper, which again, the Iclos Sniper, you can also get out of the Umbral Ingrams, and that's a great weapon. There's some great, uh, again, rolls that you can get out of the Ingrams themselves, and then Fallen Guillotine. So this kind of gives you balance along the different things. And this is, again, good if you want to do a lot of things up close, with the eye close being something that you can bear yourself out if you need to shoot something further away. Then let's talk about a champion major loadout. Um, for that one, I would build that out of Ariana's Vow in the energy slot. And then you have a ton of options in the kinetic. You could go Cold Denial. You could go with Ford Path. You could go with Breach Light. I think all of those things are pretty good options in those cases. You could also do the uh, Braytech um, Auto Rifle. Again, that's another one that you can get in the Haunted Forest right now. And then on top of that, from a power selection, you could go with Fallen Guillotine for things that are close up, or you could go with Komodo or Lie in the Sand. Those are from earlier seasons. You can't get those now. But again, those are good for longer range DPS. So again, Theriana's Vow, this is going to be something that can, you can use really well against a lot of majors or champions. And then you have other options in there that you can basically take everything else out. A good DPS support loadout would be built around Energy Divinity. Again, this would be something where you're helping people do sustained DPS. And then you have other weapons to, to help you out in addition to that. So for this one, um, I picked uh, Breach Light. Breach Light's a good kinetic for that, for doing your kind of bailout weapon to kind of help you out if you run into issues. And Perfect Paradox, which was a shotgun you could get in earlier seasons. And then built on top of this, I would do Fallen Guillotine. And then again, Komodo or Lion in the Sand, depending if you're doing something short or long range, depending on what type of weapons, uh, type of uh, things you're running to within the raid. Then another build is a sustained DPS build. So for this build, I would do, again, I build this around Anarchy, if you have that. If you don't have that yet, you know, you still have time to kind of get that, then scourge the pass before it goes away. But around that, um, in the energy slot, I would do Iclos Sniper. Again, that would help you with longer range things. And then again, in the kinetics, like I've talked about earlier, I would do Cold Denial or Bray Tech, Ford Path or Breach Light. Those are all great options for doing basically the clearing ads while you allow the other things to be able to help you with DPS. And finally, for a long range kind of max DPS builds, um, again, similar to some other builds I talked about, I would do Perfect Paradox or Breach Light in your primary. Again, these are things that kind of get you out of trouble. For kind of helping with ads in general, um, I think in the energy slot, you have a ton of great options. You have Gnawing Hunger, Last Hope, you could also, depending on what you use in your power, and we'll talk about your power in a minute, you could use Hard Light or Risk Runner. Those are great things for clearing out ads. And Hard Light specifically, Risk Runner would be great if you're dealing with a lot of things that, that put arc on you. But then Hard Light would be something that's great if you have a lot of things with different shields. Okay. Finally, in the power, again, depending on if you used exotics in your energy slot, I could go with Xenophage, Whisper, Komodo, or Line in the Stand. Okay, those are, again, all things... That will allow you to do sustained long range DPS with great perks to be able to basically maximize your DPS. So again, those are just some options and thoughts. We don't know what the sandbox is gonna look like. We do know that exotics are all gonna be still power level available. So we know this will stay in. And I basically what I did is taken a bunch of different weapons and give you options. So over the next few weeks, what I would do is I would continue to go in activities, look for these if you have it, look in your vaults, see if you have good rolls. Some of these things are from previous seasons. And then based on that, and based on what you see from Bungie, then you'd be best prepared to get into the raid and have a ton of different weapons that you could use for different scenarios. Because again, we don't know what the encounters are gonna look like. We don't know what type of enemies. We don't know what kind of challenges we're going to run into. Are they long range enemies? Are the things we're going to do short, close range? We just don't know. So that's the video, guys. I hope you uh, liked it. If you did, again, I really would appreciate a like and a subscribe to the channel. Again, um, just doing prep like the rest of you guys. We'll see what the raid looks like. Really looking forward to the season. It definitely looks like a lot of exciting content. And I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.